So far, we assign the aggressors in EMIT and synchronize the coupling data between HFSS 3D layout and EMIT. In this part, we'll analyze the design. But first, select the coupling node. Come down to the Properties window and set the default coupling to negative 30 dB. This is a good estimate for worst case coupling for interference occurring outside our HFSS simulation range. Go to the Simulation tab and click this option to launch the EMIT analysis window. The first thing you'll notice is the scenario matrix. The columns represent the aggressors while the rows represent the receivers. For this example, we have five aggressors and one receiver. Each cell represents all possible aggressor waveforms and receiver channel combinations pertaining to the pair. Each aggressor has two waveforms corresponding to the high and low speed systems. Since the receiver has 14 channels available, each cell represents 28 combinations, resulting in 140 total interference channel combinations to be analyzed. When we run the simulation, we'll see an instant coloring of these results. Red indicates a problem. By hovering over any individual cell, we can see the worst possible EMI margin for the pair. Yellow might make us nervous too, as it indicates a marginal or borderline RFI performance. We'll deal with that later on. The results synchronize and update automatically when we isolate any of the pairs. Click the cells and watch the results update. The worst case margin is coming from the Wi-Fi controller data line. To investigate further, expose the two waveforms under the Wi-Fi controller. Both the slow and fast clocks reveal high EMI margin, with the faster clock significantly higher. For any aggressor waveform, the EMI margin varies across all channels of the Wi-Fi radio. Each EMI margin channel is different depending on the tune channel. For instance, this channel shows a considerably different margin than this one. For the higher speed clock, we see much smaller variation across the tune channels. However, the magnitude of the EMI margin is significantly higher when compared to the slower clock, about 25 dB more. Neither of these data rates provides an acceptable EMI margin given the high amplitude of coupling. Looking at the external data line, the story is different. Here we see vastly improved EMI margin for the slower data rates. Remember, negative EMI margin shown in green is good and represents no interference. We can safely conclude that there are two possible mitigation schemes. First is to reduce the coupling between the Wi-Fi controller data line and the antenna. Second is to choose the slower data rate over the fast data rate for reducing interference. Watch the next part for the mitigation. 